Yeah, yeah, this boy T Nasty, and I got another dope video for y'all, man. This video right here is from Audit the Audit, Cost Arrest Firefighter Who Saved Citizens' Life. Should be a very interesting video. Without further ado, man, make sure you like and subscribe, leave us some comments, and let's go ahead and get to this reaction. Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers crime scenes, detentions, and obstruction, and is brought to us by investigative journalist Tony Biasati from the Ventura County Star. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On October 9th, 2020, retired firefighter Joseph Garces was driving his Jeep in Santa Paula, California, when when he saw shooting victim Samir Salgado lying face up in a parking lot in a pool of liquid. Mr. Garces pulled over next to the man, and when he realized the liquid was blood, he got out of his vehicle and began to administer CPR. Shortly thereafter, several officers with the Santa Paula Police Department arrived on the scene, and the interaction that followed was captured on their body cameras. Yeah. Don't go to that, don't go to the car. Don't go to that car. Stay over here, stay over here, stay over here. Come over here. That's your car? That's my car. I was driving by. I saw it. Oh, I'm a retired fireman. Okay. I'm not a part of this. We don't know anything about that. We see a gun in the car. You're not going there. Do you have your ID? It's in the car. What's your name? Joe Garces. Joe Garces. You got, you got to relax, okay? We know you're helping us out. Wait, but you guys aren't listening either. That's part of the problem. Yeah. So I said we appreciate your being right, involved, forget, okay? Forget, we forget. just run it. That's his knife. I took it out of his pocket to cut his shirt okay. off. And that's your vehicle. Yeah, I was driving north. I saw the lady. They were looking this way, and I saw him down, and I thought it was beer or something. Spun around and came in, saw the blood. She said they were calling 911. I screamed, has he been shot? She said, yeah, it was. I was pulling in. Okay. Saw the gunshot wound to the side of his face. Um, I did a quick check. Found the gun in his waistband, rendered it useless, stuck it inside my car. Grabbed his knife, cut off his shirt, and then you guys started showing up. Okay. Did you, see, any, doing did you see anybody no, running? Nothing, anybody nothing, leaving nothing. the area? Nothing. Anything? Not a thing. Leave him. Someone who leaves him, get a mask. Not a thing. Get this guy out of here, sir. Okay. He's, he's, he's a witness. Jesus. What the? Relax, relax. Okay. Well, we appreciate it. Huh? So I got a crime scene, sir. I'm a detective. Yeah, and I'm here helping him. So step the f off. Okay. If you're a good detective, you wouldn't be yelling at me right now. You'd be taking care of your job. Yeah, f you. I can't get the. Get out of my crime scene! What are you gonna do to me? Get out of my crime scene! I'm gonna make you next time! Get out of my crime scene! Come with me, Mr. Gar Garces. Mr. Garces. Oh, that dude had a bad day or something. His old lady cheated on something. Rivera That's crazy. And orders Mr. Garces to get out of his crime scene. And the other officers lead Mr. Garces out to the scene. Or. Oh, damn it. I mean, it, yeah. of the scene. Officers generally have the authority to close a crime scene to the public, and as the Supreme Court noted in the 19th, or he knows this dude's. He it seems like they have like a personal background with each other. Maybe this firefighter did his his ex old lady or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? That's what it feels like. <laughs> you know. Tip me out wrong. 1972 case of Brandsburg versus Hayes, even the press has, quote, no constitutional right of access to because this dude, crime or disaster when the he's literally talking to the other officer about what happened, getting great details from his other uh, his other officers getting great detail from uh, the, the ex firefighter. So, why is he all of a sudden just like raging? You know what I'm saying? Crazy, right? They know each other personally. General public is excluded. According to the U.S. Department of Justice publication Crime Scene Investigation, a guide for law enforcement, one of the first tasks an initial responding officer should undertake upon arriving at a crime scene is to secure and control persons at the scene. The guide explains that, quote, controlling, identifying, and removing persons at the crime scene and limiting the number of persons who enter the crime scene and the movement of such persons is an important function of the initial responding officers in protecting the crime scene and states that the initial responding officer should quote control all individuals at the scene and prevent individuals from altering or destroying True physical enough, evidence though. by quote well, restricting movement location and they, activity I think, I think while even ensuring that too, right? and maintaining safety at the scene additionally first responding officers should identify all individuals at the scene secure and separate suspects and witnesses and remove bystanders from the scene 
Here, because Mr. Garces was a witness who was being interviewed, it seems more appropriate under the DOJ's guidelines that he would be secured and separated without necessarily being removed from the scene like a bystander would be. However, given the broad discretion that officers have to protect and secure crime scenes, a court would likely conclude that Detective Rivera had the authority to remove Mr. Garces from the perimeter. People will give you guys the benefit of the doubt. And I work with you mo 27 years. When do I get my car back then? Hey, tell them. Thank you for teaching me not to be helpful, you fat. Step back, step back, step back, step back, step back. I don't know who you're Oh, yeah, so now you're going to come over with me, huh? You're doing a really good job right now, aren't you? I need you to back up. You need to calm him. I need you to back up. No, I got him. I got him. I got him. Come here. You need to hands on Really, the pain compliance, that's what we need to do. What's his name? After Mr. Garces shouts at Detective Rivera from outside the parking lot, Detective Rivera leaves the scene, approaches Mr. Garces, and puts his hand on his shoulder. Mr. Garces pulls his arm away and uses a profanity to tell Detective Rivera to keep his hands off him. In response, Officer Rivera immediately grabs Mr. Garces's right arm, wrenches it behind his back, and C clamps his forearm and elbow as we have discussed before on ata some people don't need to be cops right just some people like this dude he's he's an ex-firefighter right retired see something happen reacted tried to help got pulled to the side it was was talking to another officer who was just trying to get information from the witness right just to have this asshole cop tell him, hey, get off my, get out of my crime scene. Like, yeah, like all the audio was saying, the, the whole bystander rule applies, but you got to get the most information you possibly can, for, especially from a dude who just tr only trying to help. I can see why he fired off on him like the way he did, because that was bullshit. It really was, bro. Now, it was bullshit. In order for an officer's use of force against a citizen to be constitutional, it must be quote-unquote reasonable under the Fourth Amendment, which guarantees citizens the right, quote, to be secure in their persons against unreasonable seizures. In the 1989 case of Graham... It's just mad, but just because it's due... Court explained like, that, quote, determining which, whether the force used... Freedom of speech, like, he can, he can yell at you and say what he want to fourth amendment while she's touching him. Careful balancing like, we all human beings, right? And I'm the same way. You can't just talk to me any kind of way, right? You just can't talk like look at me. I'm not gonna have like anybody just talk to me any kind of way, right? But like I'm a I'm a um I'm a foreman. My, oh, I'm a foreman on my job, right? I can these dudes can talk to me any kind of way they want to. The higher ups can talk to me any kind of way they want to, but I'm not gonna spaz on it because it's my job. And just like them, like, bro, you just can't arrest anybody just because, you know what I'm saying? I can't go, like, uh, for say for instance, right, one of my main guys talk crazy to me. I just I just can't fire him. It doesn't work like that. You know what I'm saying? It just don't. Of the nature just like this dude just can't arrest this, this dude just to, the just to arrest him. Interests against the countervailing governmental interests at stake. You know what I'm saying? And while the court it's noted, crazy. quote, Fourth Amendment jurisprudence has long recognized that the right to make an arrest or investigatory stop necessarily... Uh, that probably was a bad, like, some degree of analogy. Or but you know what I'm saying. Y'all know what I'm saying, right? They ultimately concluded that the force used to conduct an arrest or investigatory detention must be justified under, quote, the facts and circumstances of each particular case including the severity of the crime at issue, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of the officers or others, and whether he is actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. We will discuss whether Detective exactly. Rivera had what are your eyes tell you, you know what I'm probable cause to detain or arrest Mr. Garces. This dude was trying to save somebody's well, life. Even assuming that Detective Rivera had the authority to seize Mr. Garces, any offense he could be suspected of committing was nonviolent and not particularly serious. Now, and there was that, no evidence the retired firefighter was kind of like safety, as he was kind of aggressive in a verbal he was like altercation crazy no language made any but still or moved his body in a threatening way 
As for the third factor, whether Mr. Garces was actively resisting arrest, Detective Rivera never informed Mr. Garces that he was being detained or arrested, and never requested that he put his hands behind his back or it's otherwise OD, comply with other commands. So it would be unfair to characterize him pulling away from Detective Rivera and telling him not it's to touch him as an attempt it's to either personal or Applying you know, the three gram factors to this situation, it is so just had a bad day. that a jury like would Ole left them or something. that Detective Rivera's use of force was unfair reasonable and excessive oh my only left me likewise the so, -called so i'm gonna just take it on the next person type shit. may have violated the santa paula police department's use of force policy which states it came over uh, came in there with a chip on the shoulder only that amount of force that reasonably appears necessary given the facts and totality of the circumstances known to or perceived by the officer at the time of the event to accomplish a legitimate law enforcement purpose and that quote officers may only use a level of force that they reasonably believe is proportional to the seriousness of the suspected offense or the reasonably perceived level of actual or threatened resistance. Because Mr. Garces did not appear to be any sort of physical threat, was not suspected of a serious crime, and was not resisting a stated attempted arrest. Audit the audit, man. Do you do your own editing and your own... Like, I know you do the voiceover, but do you do your own editing? Because if so... Well... I hate he one, bro. Strong argument that Detective Rivera's use of force. And then you do your own research. Use of force policy. Take it down a notch. You can take, take it, down it down a notch. Somebody here's not take controlling themselves. Down. Down. You take a deep breath. Don't be a hypocrite. I've taken a deep breath. It's your turn. Now. Yeah, don't be a hypocrite. You want to talk like adults? I'll let you go. Okay, you did talk you like start adult. talking to me like an adult? Do you understand how I need to do my job? Do you see what you're doing wrong? You, if you know how to do this job and you have a badge, then you would understand. Now, do you want to go for 148 if you have a badge? It's so. Do you have a badge? Yes, Are you retired? Yes. Do you want to go for 148 for being in a crime scene? Just because sergeants at patrol don't know how to do their job, and you were a You're cop saying your sergeant doesn't know how to do his I, job? Take him. Turn him around. Where's your back? <laughs> Jeep, like I keep saying, but we're you won't listen. Jeep. We're adding your Jeep. And you will see it when you do look you at the front of your, your car. Do you want me to have to write a search warrant and keep it, or do you want to keep your car? Do you want to get home as soon as possible? I'm not talking anymore. Okay. Sink him, uh, sink him in, uh, this car right 64. here. 64. What's your first name? Joe. Joe. Hey, check that out. I stopped to help somebody who's been shot. I'm getting arrested. Um, Have a seat for a second. Just so you know, I'm retired because of PTSD. Got it. Major anxiety problems. Got it. Being in handcuffs doesn't help me. I know you guys got to do it. Keep away from me. You got it. He is accelerating this way hey, more than I am. I won't let him talk to you anymore. You want the windows down or anything? Okay. Can we, we just sit right here with me, the door open? I ain't going anywhere, dude. You guys yeah, all know I'll where I live. I'll sit right here for now. I mean, I know what you guys do. I mean, I did it with you for right. 27 years in Oxnard, not Santa Paula. Right. To have that happen, that's as unprofessional as anything I did, and a cop shouldn't lose it like that. You both, you and I both know that. Do me a favor, yeah, just sit here for now. No problem. Well, they know that. I already told the first couple guys here that there's a gun on the on the uh, pat or the floor of my okay. of the driver. Okay. Oh, dude, this is gonna freak me out. Come back quick. I'll roll up. I'll roll down the windows. I can't a little stand bit. Okay. <laughs> um, and what was your last name, sir? Garces. Garces. G R C E S. Okay. And you're detained right now. Okay. You're yeah, not I under arrest. Understand. All right, man. Yeah, I totally get it. The officer informs Mr. Garces that he is being detained and is not under arrest, despite the fact that he has been placed in handcuffs in the exactly. back of a police vehicle. Although the use of arrest-type detention methods, such as handcuffing an individual, well, they say, or they say detained, bro. They vehicle does not necessarily transform a arrested and detained is totally different, bro. Detention into an arrest requiring probable cause, as the Second District Court of Appeal of California explained in the 2008 case of In Ray Antonio B. Quote: When the detention exceeds the boundaries of a permissible investigative stop, the detention becomes a de facto arrest requiring probable cause. The court recognized that handcuffing a suspect did not convert a detention man, during stops where, quote, the officer. This man literally tried to save somebody's life, bro. And this dude was power tripping. The, the other cop was. Yo, you know who I kind of almost fought in this situation right here? The cop that was actually interviewing him, right? He did say, yeah, he's a witness, right? But he says, like, wait a minute. I just told you this was a witness. So back off a little bit. I'm, I'm questioning him right now to get more details. Matter of fact, you should be over here with me if you're a detective questioning him about the whole situation. This dude literally tried to save, lives, save this dude's life. Literally, bro. Just...
this fucking cop come over here and like, oh, no, you gotta, you gotta get out of my crowd scene. Of course, this dude's gonna feel some type of way because this dude literally went, like, he could have just kept going. Oh, just another dead mf right here, right? When he stopped to say this dude, like, did everything right just to have some asshole come to him and yell at him. You know what I'm saying? And that other cop should have been like, no, I'm not going to put him in the back seat. I'm not going to arrest him because he tried to save this dude's life. Yes, sir. I kind of almost blame him, bro. Because if it was me, whether he's a detective or not, because, you know, you, you got ranks and stuff. Like, the detectives are up here, and then you got the regular patrol people or whatever. But I would have been like, no, you ain't arresting this dude. He just tried to save this dude's life. What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bro, like... At my job, before I became a foreman, I was, like, a little entry guy. And I still voiced my displeasures, bro, no matter what. Like, it's no way you can let this dude slide with this shit, bro. No way. Officer had a That's how I pause basis to believe the detainee presented a physical threat to the officer or would flee, but ultimately concluded that the use of handcuffs in question transformed a detention to an arrest when the officers had no basis to believe that the individual posed a danger to them or that handcuffing him was necessary to effectuate the purpose of the stop. Here, it does not seem that the officers conducted any further investigation of Mr. Garces. This cop right here detained. with the body cam, now he's the problem, bro. Placing him in a police vehicle in handcuffs constituted an arrest because he was not a physical threat or a flight risk. Still, even if a court determined that Mr. Garces was simply being detained and not arrested, it is unclear whether the officers had the reasonable suspicion to do so constitutionally. Section 148 of the California Penal Code makes it a crime to willfully resist, delay, or obstruct a peace officer, quote, in the discharge or attempt to discharge any duty of his or her employment. Although it could be argued that Mr. Garces delayed Detective Rivera in his investigation of the crime scene, as the 4th District Court of Appeal Hello. California explained in the 1989 case of Long versus Valentino, quote, Speech is generally protected by the First Amendment, even if it is intended to interfere with the performance of an officer's duty, provided no physical interference results. Nonetheless, there is nothing in the statute that limits its application to nonverbal conduct. And in the 1996 case of People v. Robles, the Appellate Division of the Superior Court of California held that an individual could be convicted for obstructing when he warned a suspect of an undercover officer's identity, causing him to run. Likewise, in the 2002 case of in Ray Mohammed C, the 6th District Court of Appeal of California upheld a conviction under the statute when an individual, quote, willfully delayed the officer's performance of duties by refusing the officer's repeated request that he step away from the patrol car because three officers had to order him to step away a total of five times before he complied, and the officers had to interrupt their investigation to deal with him. Still, in reaching this decision, the court noted that the statute does not require individuals to immediately comply with police orders, and that the conviction in this case was warranted because the defendant did not merely fail to respond to an order, but, quote, affirmatively responded to the police orders with defiance. Applying this precedent, it is possible that a court could conclude that Mr. Garces delayed the investigation by arguing with Detective Rivera and not immediately exiting the crime scene when ordered to do so. Or, at the very least, a court could determine that the officers had reasonable suspicion to believe that he had committed this offense. However, given the strong historical recognition recognition by the courts that criticism of the police is protected by the First Amendment, it seems more likely that a court would decide that Mr. Garces was engaged in protected speech, and that because he did comply with the orders to exit the crime scene in a reasonable time frame, he did not violate the obstruction statute. Absolutely. Hey, Cap, can we get some decontamination for a guy in the back of the car here? He was doing CPR, got sure. blood on him. Sure. I, I got the fire captain come over to the camp. Did you just find water? I don't know. I've been standing over okay. here. This is the one that needs decontaminated cap. He has blood on him. Yeah, Bro, there, there's there's laws right in place, right? Which sometimes like cops like that that detective like don't acknowledge and just step all over it. And then, and then there's common sense, right? This officer right here, she had the common sense to not have this dude in his backseat with another dude's blood all over him. On top of letting this officer, this detective, just come over here and just like, I, you're interviewing him. 
Like he, you're straight up interviewing him, bro. And it's, it's not make me upset because this asshole didn't do nothing about it, bro. Like you literally was interviewing him, and you let this asshole detective walk over to him and just like, nah, get out of my crime scene. Like, bro, you interviewing him. Whether he's higher ranking than you or not, hey, bro, chill out. You know what I'm saying? I got this. You know what I'm saying? Just chill out. He's my witness. Just chill out. If you want to interview him, that's fine. But this dude was just literally trying to save somebody's life. And he's in the backseat of a car right now with his dude's blood all over him, bro. It's actually a, a witness when he was doing CPR when we came up. And I won't play. We had to... Where's the blood on him, do you know? I don't know. Okay. That's Probably stupid shit, bro. Why is this... This dude should be... Like getting the key to the city um, I'm not or whatever, trying to save this dude's life, that. and yeah, he's in the backseat of a fucking car right now. Car for about 15 minutes, after which Detective Rivera uncuffed Mr. Garces and told him he was free to leave. Sometime later, Mr. Garces requested emergency medical services, and a police officer called an ambulance for him. Mr. Garces was treated at Community Memorial Hospital in Ventura, California, and reportedly suffered a dislocated shoulder and torn labrum that had to be surgically repaired. No charges were filed against Mr. Garces. Mr. Salgado survived the shooting, and a suspect was apprehended and charged with attempted murder a few days later. As of the date of writing this episode, the charges are still pending. On August 19, 2021, Mr. Garces filed a federal lawsuit against Detective Rivera and the city of Santa Paula, alleging civil rights violations, including a federal claim for excessive force and several state laws. Whoa, but I hope you get that bad, bro. 2023, U.S. District Judge Fernando Anaya Rocha ruled that Detective Rivera had qualified immunity and therefore could not be held personally liable for the federal excessive force claim because the use of a C-clamp hold had not been clearly established as a violation of right. qualified immunity and therefore could not be state law claims. On March 24th, 2023, U.S. District Judge Fernand... What point about who? Endo Anaya Rocha ruled that Detective Rivera had. Oh, before all these people who like, oh no, he's you know what I'm saying don't 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 kill me because I felt like the country was ran pretty good when he was in office, right? Don't don't chop my head off about that, right? But he was he's always oh never mind I don't know what you're gonna get qualified into it. immunity and therefore could not be held personally liable for the federal excessive force claim because the use of a C clamp hold had not been clearly established as a violation of the Fourth Amendment. However, as of the date of writing this episode, the federal claim is still pending against the city, and the state law claims remain. I'm not gonna get into it, but don't hold me. Trust me. And the city overall, Detective Rivera gets an F for maintaining an unprofessional and disrespectful demeanor throughout the Fat encounter, F. unnecessarily employing physical force well, against Mr. Garces instead of exploring... Also, I'm also mad about this right here. I almost said something arresting crazy, Mr. Garces not, without probable yeah. cause. From the moment he arrived on the scene, Detective Rivera expressed unfounded hostility towards Mr. Garces, who, at that time, was simply providing a witness statement to another officer after working to save the life of a shooting victim. And while I understand that he wanted to secure the crime scene, there was no need to speak about and to Mr. Garces in such an insolent tone. Although especially, to especially when he's being interviewed by another cop. That's what's crazy to me about the whole situation. He's being interviewed after trying to save somebody's life. Got interviewed by another cop as a witness. Just had this dude right here power tripping. Straight up power tripping. And hey, give the other officer an F2. Because he should have stepped in and be like, no, nah, I'm interviewing this dude back off a little bit. You're tripping. That would have been me. Like, hey, hey, chill out. You're tripping. I'm interviewing this dude. He's a witness. He's trying to say this dude like, chill out. Whether he's high right or not. Chill out. And he wasn't chill. Hostility with inflammatory speech. Detective Rivera also escalated the situation on several occasions. For no reason, bro. Resorted to a use of force that dislocated Mr. Garces's shoulder. These escalations appeared to be motivated by anger over Mr. Garces's speech, rather than legitimate investigatory or. Oh, uh, before that, he had problems before that. This demonstrates why it is essential. His old lady left the more got cheated on with his personal. When dealing with Who's disrespectful saying? speech from members of the public. He's having a bad day or whatever. Noted Somebody. Cut him off of traffic. I don't know. Of the That's crazy. Penal code. 
quote, the authority to use physical force conferred on peace officers is a serious responsibility that shall be exercised judiciously and with respect for human rights and dignity and for the sanctity of every human life. In the future, Detective Rivera would do well to keep the gravity of the authority entrusted Ugh. in his mind before resorting to the use of physical force against a man. It's like they don't know the law, bro. Mr. Garces gets a B plus because although he shouted profanities at Detective Rivera and did not immediately comply with the officer's yeah, commands, he ultimately did clear the crime scene, continued to express his objection to Detective Rivera's lack of professionalism, and took appropriate legal action after being subjected to a... Yeah, man, a B plus for that? I mean, an A minus at least. This dude's trying to save somebody's life. But anyways, that's the end of the video, y'all, man. I hope y'all enjoyed it, man. I'm sorry for, you know, <laughs> getting so mad about it. But I think it's bullshit, bro. Like, dude, the cops, police in general, have to know that there's public service, right? They, there's laws, and they enforce the laws. But they do too much sometimes, right? And it's a perfect example, bro. And his asshole cop friend, instead of like being like, "Hey, you know, I'm I'm, I'm interviewing this dude right now. He's a witness. Shut the fuck up. Simple as that. Chill, chill out, dude. You're a detective, but chill out. I don't. I'm on the bottom of the totem pole, but you chill out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever this dude's mindset was the way his thinking is like irrational and whatever bro but it's the end of the video man i hope y'all enjoyed it bro this your boy t nasty man how's your boy and i'm